Hi, my name is Beth and I'm a sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is my sewing blog for the month of February 2022. February is kind of a short month and I did a blog less than a month ago probably, so I don't feel like I have a lot to share, but I have been sewing a lot and I've been really busy. Mostly I've been working on piecing together my scraps to make an improvisational quilt. And here are some of the blocks. I got pretty far and was like already to the stage of putting together the quilt top. And I started feeling like it was kind of small and I wanted it to be a little bigger. And I was thinking, do I have more scraps that go with this kind of bundle of fabric colors and patterns? And because here you can see this is the one quilt top for the front and it's like it could be a lot quilt, but it's just a little small. So I looked around and of course I found a whole bundle of fabrics on my um, kind of rolling cart. And there's a lot more red in that group. So um, I'm thinking maybe I will just keep all of these like darker blues for the front or one side of the quilt and then use the other blues and reds for the um, reverse side of the quilt. But I'm still piecing those together. And last night I was going through my like basket where I hold scraps and I found a ton more of these blue scraps. So it's really a never ending project going through my scraps and using them. But it is a really fun process. I really enjoy doing it. Um, I find it really relaxing because the process that I use for um, stitching these is very improvisational and it really cuts down on any decision making. So it's a really nice way to get into the flow of sewing and I like really feel more relaxed doing that than any of my other kind of garment sewing projects. Because what I try to do is just keep the scraps intact as much as possible and cut them only when absolutely necessary. So um, if you are interested in using your scraps in this way, I have an e-course that's all about it. Um, it's specifically for garment sewists to teach you the skills that you need beyond garment sewing to make a quilt. And I'll put a link to that down in the show notes. Another quilting related thing I started doing was I took a hand quilting course with Heidi Parks at the end of January. I might've mentioned it in my last vlog. And I got started on this little quilt. This one's pretty tiny and I'm using muslin scraps from my um, like pattern testing and I'm doing some diagonal um, hand stitching. I didn't get super far, uh, but the class was really great for just like getting a start and making myself start trying it. She does a great job of going through the different tools that you need and also talking about um, design and like color and how you would combine your like the color of your fabric with the kind of hand quilting that you want to do. So I thought it was a really great class. I'll link to that down below too. But I did finish a couple of little projects using my hand quilting and my scraps. I made two of these little um, Kindle or e-reader cases and this is just scraps from that bigger piece that I fashioned into this shape and I hand quilted it. So I used like a black crochet thread. I really like how that looks on here. Um, like it's really visible, but it still matches. It goes with the blues pretty well. And then it's just finished with these ties. Um, I also have another version here that I made a long time ago and then just recently finished. And this one is for a pair of sunglasses. The tutorial for this little case went live in my improv quilting e-course last week. So if you're already signed up for the course, you should have gotten an email about it. And if you want to sign up and get the tutorial for this, there will be a link down below. I should also mention that I have been using my little Singer Featherweight a lot. I introduced this guy in my last vlog. This is a machine that I inherited from my great aunt and I got it refurbished. It's running really well and I've really been enjoying using it for the piecing. This machine only does a straight stitch, so it's really great for piecing. I have not used it for other projects, but I've really been enjoying using it. I've also gotten back into pattern drafting, which is pretty exciting because I haven't done any for a few months, but I've been wanting to do a heavyweight 
princess seam skirt like this one that I drafted and made in like 2016. Ever since then, I've been wanting to do a pattern for it. So um, I'm working on this. I'm going to use my projector and test it out later this afternoon. Um, one of the big reasons I got the projector is that I think it'll speed up the pattern testing process for me. So I'm really excited to get in and test it out and fingers crossed that my draft of the pattern will work. Um, there are going to be different details than with this skirt. Um, there'll be a waistband and buttons down the front um, and like a patch pocket instead. So I'm pretty excited. I think it'll be a cool skirt. I have worn a lot of denim skirts over the years. It was really like one of my wardrobe staples for a long time. So I think it'll be fun to get back to it. The last thing that I want to talk about is the survey results. So in my last vlog, I announced that I was doing a survey for viewers on YouTube, blog readers, um, anyone who follows so DIY, just to get an idea of what you're looking for in terms of content and patterns. So I thought it'd be fun to share the results with you. Um, it was a pretty short survey and it's all anonymous, so <laughs> I'm not gonna reveal anything um, too private. There were 290 responses. Thank you to everyone who filled out the survey. I really appreciate it. And I sent out the survey on my blog. I talked about it here on YouTube, on Instagram, and via my newsletter. Um, and I posted about it on Facebook and Twitter. So I tried to kind of get to everyone that follows me anywhere they were. Um, so I think 290 is a really amazing response. I really appreciate it. So my first question was, what kinds of blog posts and videos do you enjoy the most? And you could check more than one answer. So the most popular ones were sewing tips and sewing technique tutorials. Those received 220 and 211 votes. And then in tied for second place was pattern fitting tutorials and pattern hacks. And those each had about 170 votes. Third place was pattern reviews. Then in last place was sewing blogs with 80 votes. And there were a number of write-ins for sew alongs. My next question was, where do you prefer to get updates about Sew DIY? And number one was the newsletter. Number two was Instagram. Then in third place, we have a tie with YouTube and blog posts. And in last place was Facebook. So I think that really makes sense. Um, it kind of correlates with the number of followers that I have on those, um, except email. I have fewer people on my email list than on Instagram, but I think that people, um, probably interact more with the email newsletter. It's a little more guaranteed that you're gonna see it than that you're gonna see something on Instagram. The third question was, have you purchased a Sew DIY pattern before? And for this one, 40% of respondents had and 60% had not. I don't really know what I was expecting for this question. I don't think it was too shocking because it's like fairly in the middle, but it was interesting to find out what that number was. So question number four is what additional pattern features or options would you like to see from Sew DIY? And the top answer was actually no additional features are needed. So that's actually pretty good to hear. I feel like my patterns do have a lot of um, features to them, but I have thought about doing more in the future. So the next most popular with 81 votes was to have a printed pattern and instruction booklet. Then with 60 votes was a printed pattern with a digital instruction booklet. And with 17 votes, I had projector files. Um, and a lot of this survey is about gauging the temperature on projector files and printed patterns. So these were really interesting to hear. Um, full disclosure, I have thought about printed patterns for a long time. It's definitely an investment as far as time and money and also storage space. And I have about 900 square feet in my apartment, so I don't have a lot of storage space. And that's one of the big ones. The other concern that I have is the environment. So if I get something printed, it would likely have to be shipped to me and then I would have to ship it to somebody else and it's using up all this paper and resources. And I feel like digital patterns are a much more environmentally friendly 
uh, offering. So that's the main reason why I've not done printed patterns before, but I know that a lot of people like them and they're really useful. So it's something I've thought about. I occasionally get an email from somebody saying that they want to buy a pattern, but they only buy printed patterns. And I understand, but it's just a lot to consider, um, both from the environmental standpoint and from the actual like investment of money in space. So that's where it is. I don't have plans right now, but it is something that I look into from time to time. Question number five is, do you prefer pattern hack blog posts or would you prefer a pattern extension? So the pattern hack would be a blog post where I show you how to alter the pattern to create this other design. And then the pattern extension would be, I create all the pattern pieces myself and then you can pay the extra money for those extra pattern pieces and the instructions that go with them. In the fall last year, I did some hacks from my Miri tank top that I think are really cool and I felt like I didn't really get much response about them. And so I kind of wondered if the um, pattern hacking and the drafting was just like something that people weren't really interested in and kind of beyond where they want to go. So this was a really interesting question to me. So about 52% would prefer the pattern add-on and 41.5% prefer the blog post. And then there's a handful of other write-in answers and those are mostly that it depends on like, I think the difficulty level of the hack. So that's a really interesting one. Um, I think my Miri tank top would be a really great one to do uh, an extension pack for. It, I love the dress that I made from it. So I'm kind of thinking about that. I think that'd be great for summer. So stay tuned. I thought that was just a really interesting one to kind of gauge and see what people really like. So, you know, cause I'm comfortable hacking patterns and have been doing it for years, but I can understand that other people may just not want to go there. I lost my footage there for question six, so I'm refilming. Um, might look a little bit different, but I tried to blend in. Question six was, do you use a projector for sewing? So the most common answer was, no, I've heard of projectors, but I'm not interested in using them at this time. And that was about 54% of respondents, 167 people. The next biggest group was, no, I haven't heard of using a projector for sewing. And I think this is pretty common when I first talked about projectors on Instagram. I got a lot of questions from people saying like, what are you talking about? How would you even use a projector for sewing? So it is a really new technology for this craft. So I really understand why not everyone has heard of it. So again, that answer was 22% and 64 people. The next most common answer was, no, I don't use it now, but I would like to in the future. And that was 56 people at 19%. Next, I had three respondents. So 1% of people say that yes, they use a projector all the time. And finally, one person said, yes, I use a projector for sewing sometimes. So it's really apparent that overall, People do not use projectors very often, but it's potentially a growing market. So my next question was, if projector files in addition to the A0 files are included with Sew DIY patterns, would that make you more likely to buy one? And really this question I think was pretty straightforward is to gauge interest. Is it gonna be worth my while to add projector files to my patterns? So 13 people said yes, definitely, which is interesting. So a little bit more than the people who are currently using projectors. 78 people said maybe. So that's probably a lot of those people who want to use it in the future. And then 190 people said no. So that's like 190 out of 290. Um, so about two thirds, 66% of people said that they're not going to be more interested in buying patterns if I do projector files. So I did think that was interesting, um, not that surprising. So um, I've been playing around with making projector files and I started with my lube box dress because that's my most popular pattern. And I thought it was gonna be super fast, but it ended up being like three hours of work and I was nowhere close to being done. Cause I, you know, like all the drafting is done, it's just reformatting. And I felt like, you know, I'm gonna be spending like 10 hours per pattern. So that's like a hundred hours of work. That's two full weeks of work. 
And if no one cares, then that's really a waste of my time when I could just be making new patterns and things that are that, things that people are actually interested in. So for now, I'm not gonna go back and update the old patterns. And I also feel okay about this because all the patterns have layers and they have A0 files. So um, the things that you really need to use them with a projector are there. And the projector files would just be an extra formatting to like make the lines thicker, um, change the notches, put a grid layer in there. So, oh, and then like also make, um, instead of having anything on the fold, there would be ones that you would you make the pattern piece um, unfolded and just have everything kind of spaced out and on one really big artboard. So it was just actually a lot more work than I thought it would be. And I am very proficient in Adobe Illustrator. I use it all the time. I've used it for 20 years. I'm extremely fast. So it was a real shock to me that it took me that much time to change the formatting. So uh, maybe when I work on my next pattern, I will be able to figure out some tricks to make it faster. Um, I haven't really gotten into graphic styles before in Illustrator, but I was thinking yesterday that that might be a way that I could quickly change the format on things. So that's, I think I will probably do it for new patterns, but I'm not gonna go back and do it for old patterns just based on that research. So that's it for my updates for February 22. I hope that you found those survey results interesting. Uh, thank you so much for taking the survey and letting me know what you think about things. And I'm gonna keep working on playing around with quilting and trying out some new stuff. Um, I definitely need to do more work to, or more practice to um, get better at the hand quilting. I haven't figured out exactly the right motion yet with the thimble. So it's it's really gonna take me some more practice. Um, but I really enjoy doing it. It's a really nice thing to do just while sitting on the couch watching TV. And I have some other ideas that I wanna try for using up scraps and combining that with quilting. So uh, I'll be adding all those things to the course as they come along and hopefully my pattern testing goes well and there will be a new pattern sometime this spring. There's links to everything I talked about down in the show notes. Thank you so much for following along. Um, if you haven't already, I'd be so honored if you hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button too. Happy sewing.